our home and native land, Toronto's newest pulp culture podcast, covering your favorite comics, collectibles, media, nerdific origin stories, and more. Hosted by your northern neighbor, Joey Pengelinen. Here it is, nerdos and nerdettes. Comics Hey, nerdos and nerdettes. This is me, Joey from Comics Inc., and I am here with... Jason Liu, the creator behind Pitiful Human Lizard. And uh, Pitiful Human Lizard has just... Um, it's, it's, it's gotten me to the point where I'm binge reading just as much as I am watching and binge watching um, Queer Eye from Netflix. So that's right. my whole life right now is just Pitiful Human Lizard and the Fab Five. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jason, you're self-published on, uh, under Lou Harvest Group before i saw that many moons ago yes and it was that oh what what got me was how diy it was i mean i grew up in toronto Mm -hmm. and i grew up very very close to honest eds and that's why you saw the background of my phone um and it was the uh your your cover for number one right right um the honest eds variant cover that's the one yeah um i love it because it it just directly gets to the pitiful human lizards design because they have DIY signs everywhere in that store, and it's created such a huge brand for them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that was your journey. You were from the Lou Harvest Group, which I always think of like really good jasmine rice whenever I say that. Um, and it's, you, it's a play off of a uh, Blue Harvest because I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. Of course you are. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, and the the. Pay- the, the whole thing about the book is that it's about Lucas Barrett. Uh-huh. He's a paper pusher by day and an aspiring superhero by kind of night after 5 p.m. Um, and then you got published uh, by Chapter House in its 12th issue, was it? Um, so I had to finish publishing five issues on my own before Fatty brought me on to Chapter House. Okay. And then uh, that was August... 2015 when issue number one got mm-hmm. re-released under the chapter house brand and mm-hmm. they got it distributed all around the world and in, in, uh, comic book world. shops yeah no kidding so how what is like the furthest continent that it's touched up on well the, the, the funny story was like when, when i was doing the like a signing at silver snail yeah uh george who was the manager at the time of this um of, of silver snail he he was checking on the social medias mm-hmm. For Pitiful Human Lizard, and he showed me a tweet that that came from Australia. So that's actually like we're like north north, and they were like super super south on the other side. Like someone was praising issue number one in Australia. I was like, okay, well, we can't get further than that. Like the (laughs) only thing that you know you need now is a pop figure, legitimately, of the Pitiful Human Lizard. Yeah, that would be cool. Distributed (laughs) as a hot topic or Target special, and you know you've made it, right? That would be sweet. I'm down. Um, And uh, now, you know, what's different about it? Well, one, I did get confused one time because um, I got your uh, your floppies because I'm a a floppy girl fan. Awesome. Um, And it was like the very, very early issues, and I'm still waiting for my number one. And uh, it's a completely different look now. Yeah, it's, it's... Um, it's definitely evolved. Like yeah. every issue, uh, like I work on, I, I try to make it like better than the last issue. Of course, that, that's, of course. That, that, that's my goal, and mm-hmm. and uh, I also like just like at the same time like push myself to be not just a fast artist mm-hmm. and, and fast artist and writer, but also make sure like there's quality thrown in there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That every second is not wasted, and and. Yeah, I was pretty happy with how uh, things came to be, especially mm-hmm. like the last four issues, issues number 18 and, and 21, where we get to see some of the characters, how, like like just the dynamics of, mm-hmm. of them change from issue number one. Right, oh my gosh, totally, and I like feel just, it. Yeah, the, like, I mean, he's in space now. Like, yeah, like you know? he, he goes in space once in a while, yeah. Yeah, like... Here and there, and, and then, but... and. But back on Earth, like, the friendship between him and Majestic Rat has changed this right. year. And, right. and also, uh, he develops a new relationship right. with someone. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, and 
I found that there I had a I had a direct attraction to it not just because I lived in Toronto um, but because I feel like a little bit my life and Lucas's life is getting a little bit on a parallel level Awesome. Because uh, he has his Clark Kent job, let's yeah. just put it that way, and I have my Clark Kent job, and he has his aspiring job, and this is what I do as like a passion thing, and that's what he does. Um, well, it, it, he's he's like the every person, uh, mm-hmm. where like who who grinds every day in their regular jobs, but mm-hmm. like they probably have a passion for something else, yeah, and still like you know after after that day job like mm-hmm. they put in the hours to try to reach for their dreams yeah uh, and uh yeah like it I, th- I think it's relatable in that sense and, and mm-hmm. there, there's especially for creators like that's exactly what you are yeah right now too um what is can i can you tell me what lucas actually does because i i was kind of flipping back and i'm like he, he's like he, a data analyst slash like comptroller oh like gosh. he he'd he uh, he deals with numbers and spreadsheets for a financial uh, national bank in Toronto. That that sounds super exciting. And, and, sure. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and his workplace is actually the Scotia Plaza in oh, Toronto. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Fairly, yeah. Right. So yeah. He, he could be working there. Um, and also, there's just so so much landmarks that I'd like to talk to you about before mm-hmm. and why you did that. Um, now, we talked a little bit about how you were a Kickstarter before. Um, now, how is it like having your book in Chapter House, and what in operations kind of changes for you now? Um, yeah, so I've been with Chapter House for three years. Yeah. And uh, the transition was, like, they they took care of the production and mm. and distribution of my, of my comic. Mm-hmm. Where like back then when I was doing it independently, I, I was uh, you know I was, I was taking a month to like write and draw the comic, and mm-hmm. then I would spend the next month promoting it and mm-hmm. distributing my the comic myself. Like just right. going by foot oh my to gosh. every local comic shop that would carry it. Yeah. But, um. But yeah, Chapter House just made it easier for me to just focus on making the comics. Right. And, uh, and I guess that would be the job of like any publishing house, right? Pretty much, yeah. Right, right. Um, but you literally had to go to like, you know, foot by foot, you know, have your comic in your backpack and distribute it to a bunch of comic book places? Yeah, yeah. Gosh. Well, like, we, like I, I would, uh, we would just communicate via email, like, mm-hmm. about like consignment rates and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I'll just go in, drop off the comics, get mm-hmm. my consignment money or whatever, and then, right. yeah, so deal was done. Another thing I guess I should ask you, because, you know, we both, I just found out today that, you know, we grew up in Mississauga. Yes. And uh, there's, <laughs> it's hard to get around here if you don't have a car. Uh-huh. Right? So when you were starting this whole thing, um, did you go to, like, your comic book store that you used to be able to walk to, maybe, and kind of pitch it to them first? How was that well, kind of journey? Yeah, I mean, I got, so I, I lived in Mississauga up, up till like 2010, I think. Yeah. Um, which was like years before Pitiful Human Lizard. Oh, okay, okay. So it, you were in. Yeah, like Pitiful, yeah, Pitiful Human Lizard. Like the, the the latest incarnation started 2014. Right. But it, it was a character that was inspired by uh, a mini comic I did, mm-hmm. like back in high school, that mm-hmm. I, I only saw that school cafeterias right right um, well you were hustling in xavier right yeah <laughs> for yeah. beef patties <laughs> yeah beef patties and and they had a harvey's too <laughs> what yeah oh, st joe's did not have that oh very nice um and about you know from... some insider baseball on mississauga exactly there you go um and we were talking about how like from you, you know, you were in the Kickstarter, and then then you went to Chapter House. Was there anything in art and the writing approach that changed for you? Oh, uh, drastically! Like it just gave me more time to, to focus on the writing and, and drawing. Right. Um, um, like I wouldn't have have to like take this one month break between issues to like mm-hmm. be busy promoting it and, and, and mm-hmm. distributing it so it's like right after one issue was done I went straight to the next issue mm-hmm. um, so like I wouldn't have any of that wrist uh, that that rust in my, mm-hmm. my drawing wrist mm-hmm. um, 
Right, because you actually draw. Like, this is not just, like, digital for you all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I'm a... I work traditionally. Right. What actually inspired you to even think of the pitiful human lizard back in the day? Um, I... I... I knew that <laughs> I was not a, a great artist that, that could, like, draw muscly superheroes that sure. were, like, very popular at the time. Uh-huh. That I, I just went the opposite approach and was like okay how about if i just made this story about this an average dude trying to be a superhero but uh-huh. he's not great at it and um so that was my excuse of, of drawing poorly drawn <laughs> muscles on a suit hey lucas isn't bad man yeah. like you know he's and in, in, in the new cart incarnation like he's right. he's scrawny so, yeah yeah uh, he's he's like a lean muscle you know pretty much the, the other thing that i wanted to ask you about as well be i mean i guess you kind of answered it now too because there was all these almighty superpower big muscle kind of you know clark kent type of superheroes i guess when we were growing up mm-hmm. but then you chose this route mm-hmm. really though is it just because of the whole drawing situation because you've built him a whole personality um i i, I think it's also like me just wanting to like add humor and, and just right. just uh, um, just just the, the class clown in me right. trying to express myself through through the comic. Right. Does does he reflect any way, shape, or form your real life right now? Yeah. Well, at least fifty percent. Right. Right. <laughs> at, at least. Uh, and you know, you do have his costume somewhere in your house, right? Um, or uniform? Do we call it a costume or costume? uniform? Kind yeah. Of yeah, sure. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Um, just because I know that, you know, this is not your full time thing, uh-huh. right? So this is also your a kind of a passion project as well now, right? So to me, it's kind of like maybe when I think about artists, maybe what they do is they kind of really draw from their real life and this is the way that they, it plays out in paper, you know? So I was wondering, like, is that a Jason thing? You know, like, is that just kind of how you live your life? Is. You also try to be a superhero in ways that we don't know about. Um, yeah, I, I guess you know, just just write what you know, um, and yeah. Hopefully, it translates to the paper the same yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also another really really fun thing that I like uh, reading because now I'm also part of the community. I should say, mm-hmm. um, I noticed that you draw our friends from Stadium Comics, like <laughs> Kevin and Ricky and uh-huh. Rob. Um, and I was just curious to know, like, who else you've drawn in there and, uh, why you drew them in that setting and why you drew them at all. Um, well, well, Kevin and Rob and, and Ricky have been very supportive since day one, like, uh-huh. of the Kickstarter. Um, so, like, that, that's just me paying homage to, like, that's some so great nice. yeah. friends that are in the local comic book community. Mm-hmm. Uh, and other friends, um... I just did it for I don't know just just it's just cause, fun. yeah just for fun but but other times was when um, I would do like a little competition mm-hmm. uh, like on social media and like I would be drawing and like while I'm drawing an issue mm-hmm. um, I, like I would have like f- fans identify an intersection that mm-hmm. I've drawn and if they've identified it correctly then I'll draw them in a comic oh, I would have been so good at that yeah are you still doing that. No, no. <laughs> no. Right. I think I, I think it's, I, and, and that was before Chapter House right, came right, about. Right. So like things were just very easy for yeah. me to to do things. But like now it's, it's like we got to be careful with stuff. That's true. Especially when, when when you're with like uh, like a big publisher that mm-hmm. um, and the biggest publisher in Canada. So superhero publisher, yeah. Superhero publisher, yeah. Um, I, I mean you. You got them bang on, and that's why I posted on Kevin's wall that one day. Oh, thanks. And I was like, hey, dude, this guy looks weirdly like you and Rob. For sure. And then that's when you had commented on it, too. Yeah. Um, but speaking of social media, there was one post that you made a while ago, and you had you had finished, like, just covers and, and pages and panels of, and I think it took you, like, what was it, like, maybe overnight? And, Not oh, overnight. Jesus. I mean, like, like... Yeah, for, uh, I do this thing on in- Instagram where um, I document my my production mm-hmm, yeah, during like the winter time, mm-hmm. and and um, yeah, I, I try to do things pretty fast, but 
at the same time, like, put as much quality into it right, as well. Right. Um,